Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. Last time I showed you my Iron Man motorized faceplate and how I programmed my pickaxe microcontroller to control the servo so that one switch press makes the helmet open and pressing the switch again makes it close. Um, what you'll notice it, when it's open is that you can basically constantly hear the servo trying to hold its position. So it's making a buzzing sound all the time. Um, and that's basically because um, it's pulling a string up this tube, which is actually quite tight. And it's also pulling against the spring to make sure the uh, faceplate doesn't overbalance, to make sure that it always comes back down again. Um, but obviously this, the servo needs to hold its position, so it's constantly grumbling there, trying to get to its position that you've told it to go to. Um, and it's also consuming power. So um, I'm going to try and fix that. Um, if I actually cut the power, so we just unplug this, you'll notice the faceplate droops slightly and, um, you know, it doesn't take much to cause it to kind of fall down. It's not too bad because the servo is quite stiff. Um, basically, it's just pulling this pulley, so if we wind it up, you know, it's fairly easy to back drive but not terrible. Um, but nonetheless, I don't really want to walk around like this with it open because eventually it will droop down. So we need a way to basically cut the power so the servo is not there consuming power and grumbling away trying to hold the faceplate up, but also um, we, we want it to stay locked in that position. So um, to do that, we're going to use magnetic braking. So this is an interesting concept. So if we take an electric motor, I've got another small motor here, um, this has just got a worm gear on, but if I spin it, it spins fairly freely. However, if we short the motor out, so we just basically put this test lead between the terminals. You can still spin it, but, um, you know, it's much harder. And if I just disconnect that again, it spins quite freely again. And the reason for that is that um, when you spin a, mo a motor backwards, it acts a bit like a generator. So... Um, basically, the, uh, ele the, the coil spinning in a magnetic field tries to generate electricity, but if the coils are shorted out, it's much harder for it to um, induce a current in the coils. So it has a, um, a mechanical impact um, and makes it much harder to turn. So um, that's how you break a motor. So if you've got um, a speed controller, perhaps in a radio control car or something like that, that's got braking, a braking function, that's normally how it does it. It normally disconnects the power, of course, um, from the motor and then shorts the terminals out with a relay or something. And that makes the motor much harder to turn. So, um, unfortunately, we can't just short between the red and the black wire because the servo is a bit more complicated than a normal motor. In the servo, there's some control electronics as well as the motor and a potentiometer that read its position, which is how it knows where it is and you can send it to a specific position. So, um, let's have a look inside the servo and I'll show you what I'm planning to do. All right, so I've taken the servo out. You can see there's a piece of electronics in the back there. Underneath that's the potentiometer that gives the position feedback directly from the spindle on the output. And there's the motor. So um, if we turn this, you know, it's fairly easy to back drive. But if I go and uh, short out the motor terminals, suddenly it becomes much harder to turn. So that seems like the answer. That's gonna be sufficient to lock the faceplate um, in place. And the way I'm gonna do that is with one of these, which is a relay. Um, so this is a, a magnetically operated switch. This one's out of another project, hence the bit of sticky pad stuck to it. Um, it's a six volt one, but it should switch off five volts fine. And basically this has got changeover contacts. So it has one common contact, um, which will be connected to uh, one of these when it's off. And when the relay is energized, it connects over to the other one. And you energize it by putting uh, some power across its, uh, its uh, terminals there. And you can hear it clicking. So basically it's a solenoid activated switch. So, um, what we'll need to do is run some wires out of this servo. So probably breaking the red wire and then um, connecting it, connecting this terminal instead to the other terminal. So we're basically gonna have to disconnect the power, that's very important, before we short the motor out. 
uh, but the changeover relay is ideal for that because it's simply disconnecting this uh, terminal on the motor and instead of connecting it to the power it's going to change over and connect it to the other motor terminal um, and that's quite easy to do we've got enough output pins on our pickaxe so we used before um, one for the switch input one for the servo output and I've still got two more which I can use so one, one of those will be to turn the lights on in the eyes and um, the spare one I can use to switch this relay now we have to use a transistor to switch this relay because the coil in it draws too much current for the pickaxe so I need to look in my spares box and dig one of those out so this is page 8 of the pickaxe uh, interfacing circuit manual and here is the circuit which is using a transistor to switch the relay a transistor is another type of low power switch um, it can handle more current than the pickaxe output pin so they're saying use a 1k resistor to the base and basically when uh, uh, current is present on the base it allows current to flow through here and that switches the relay on so here is the 1k resistor that I am to have um, it shows a diode as well across the relay contacts and that's to stop something called back EMF which um, basically when a coil powers down some of the current comes back out the other way and that could damage the transistor it will work without this but it might not work for very long so um, I've gone in my spares box and it looks like I've done something very similar in the past because I found this board with a relay on, um, a transistor and also the diode. So I'm going to desolder these components and uh, resolder them onto the, the area on here. Right, so I've now wired my relay in. Um, you can just about see on the board there I've got my transistor and my 1K resistor. Um, those are the wires that go to the relay. Um, and if we listen to this very carefully, the, uh, you should be able to hear it making a clicking sound before and after the servo turns. The switch also makes a click, but um, so it turns on for a second while the servo is moving and turns off again afterwards. So you should hear a click, the servo move, and another click when it turns off. So I just need to now wire the contacts to the motor of the servo to apply the magnetic braking. So we're all wired up. What I've done is uh, wired three wires to this. A green wire where the motor wire was on the motor, a red wire where it comes from, and a white wire on the opposite motor terminal. Uh, the green wire goes to the common connection of the relay. Uh, the white one goes to normally closed, so when the relay is off, basically that shorts out green to white. And when the mo uh, relay energises, the green wire collect connects to the other terminal, which is the red one, which is the motor output of the controller board so that it works normally. So basically power is disconnected and the motor is shorted out uh, when it's not in use, and when it is in use, it's powered up as usual. So, um, if we hit the switch, we should be able to hear the relay clicking and the servo still turning. And also, if we try and turn this when it's off, I can turn it, but it's actually quite hard to turn. So that should lock the face plate in place. So, um, I've made a slightly bigger hole in the end of this servo casing rather crudely with a pair of wire cutters so I can get all those new wires in so I just need to put all this back together and we'll see how well it works. So everything's, uh, well at least the servo is fitted back in the helmet, the eventual plan is to fit the relay and this control board in the helmet and potentially the batteries and um, then I can go on to make the helmet wireless. Um, well, let's just give this a go anyway. So obviously completely silent when it's open because power is cut to the motor. Um, if I push it I can in fact push it down but obviously I can walk around without it falling down which is much better and you can hear the relay clicking and cutting the power again so obviously that's going to be fantastic and it won't draw any power either or at least very little only enough just to power this circuit um, when the helmet's up and it can stay open for as long as you like. So in the next video about the helmet, I will be fitting the light up eyes. I'm planning to make lenses which light up and you can see through. I've done this a couple of times before. So if you want a sneak preview, have a look at my website at the um, project, which has all of this on in pictures and words. I also have another video coming soon to build the unibeam for the suit. So I've got these 3D printed parts and behind here, is a ridiculously bright LED cluster with six 10 watt LEDs. At the moment I haven't got a battery strong enough to power it so I'm waiting for some super capacitors to arrive 
so I can charge up a big bank of capacitors and um, which will take about um, well over a minute to charge and it will discharge in about 10 seconds to get full power to these. Also the details for this are on my website in the Ironman build section there's a sneak preview with some pictures and some other bits and pieces and a picture of this actually lit up. So subscribe to my channel and look out for future updates.